Hey everybody, part five coming at you right now. Got way more questions that we're working through. Um, not quite to the halfway mark, but we'll see if we can't make it happen. Avery Doxer, could you go through the mental cues you have as you bench press? Huge fan, man. You can honestly, uh, you've honestly had a big impact on my life, especially in changing the way I think of lifting is not something to do for others and get pissed over, but for yourself and learn from your mistakes. Keep it up. Thanks, man. I'm glad to see that you're you're making some progress and getting it. Um, biggest cues for me, uh, for my bench, I usually set my back first and um, lat engagement, keeping keeping my scapulas retracted, my lats really engaged, and then trying to rotate the break the bar in half and rotate to keep my everything in this setup really tight is the biggest thing. And then once the bar's out, the mental cues kind of go away and you go muscle memory of just get down, pause, and then just get that off of me. I don't want it on me anymore. So that's what I think of when I bench press. Um, Basil Carsa, what are your thoughts on novices using a weightlifting belt whilst working in the 80 to 90 percent of their one rep max? Um, I mean, a lot of the time when you when you talk about a novice lifter, someone who has little to no uh, lifting experience, um, I don't I don't know if if percentages are really accurate to to a true what that person is capable of. Uh, when you get to more of an intermediate or an advanced level, you kind of you know you're you're getting closer to what your body's actual potential is, and so I don't feel like a belt is as necessary for a beginning lifter. Um, but I think that it, it is not a hindrance to train with one occasionally. I think that uh, I am not one of those people that says, well, you should never use a belt unless you absolutely need one. Um, I think it's a, it's a piece of, of assistive equipment that keeps you safe and that it's what, that's what it's meant to do. And as long as you're not abusing that by using it all the time, uh, I see no reason in using one when you get to a set that, you know, a weight that makes you uncomfortable. Sometimes it's a mental thing. Sometimes you put on a belt and you just feel better about it and you can do it. Well, other people feel more comfortable without one. So just kind of, you know, take some and leave some. If you're wearing a belt for bicep curls and you, I just stop, just stop doing that. Don't do that. Um, just don't. Uh, name Rohani. How do you deal with hip impingement on deadlifting and squatting and front delt shoulder pain on benching? Um, with any kind of impingement, I try to get it cleared out. Uh, I use a lacrosse ball or my PVC roller uh, to to work with that soft tissue work and break up the adhesions and try to get everything loosened up. Do your mobility work. I made a video a while back. I'm sure that uh, many of you have seen it. Others of you haven't. It's just type in Ben Rice recovery and it's a video from a couple of summers ago where I went over some of the stretching that I do um, or go to the mobility wad Kelly Starrett's page and I'm sure they can give you some mobility work on it as far as uh, how to how to prevent it just be active with your other stuff for every you know before you go to bed roll out and stretch for 30 minutes every night I guarantee you you will have way less injuries and you know you can find 30 minutes in your day I'm sure anyone can. I don't care how busy you are. It, you, some, you can do something else while you're doing it. While you're watching TV, get your lacrosse ball out or get a Theracane and, and work on those knots and work some mobility. It's, it's really not that hard. You just have to make the conscious effort to get that time in. Oh, boy. Um, Stefan Antonajevic Anta. He's got a couple of questions. It looks like at least three, so we're going to try to get these. Uh, how to increase mobility in conventional deadlift over time. I think my lower back rounds a little when I pull heavy without a belt, though. Do you think I should add a belt when handling over 80%? I'm 6'4", by the way. Um, if you feel like you need a belt, if you feel like your form is breaking down to the point where where it is detrimental to what you're trying to do, go ahead and wear a belt. Um, at 6'4", a conventional pull is going to look a little rounded unless you uh, leverages are really, you know, if you have really a long torso and really short legs. Um, it's it, there's going to be some rounding that just happens if you look at guys like Pete Rubish or Chris Hickson, um, those tall guys that have to get down to the bar. There's just some natural rounding that occurs just to make that happen. Uh, how to increase your mobility? Keep working on your mobility outside the gym, and then keep working on it when you when you get there. Um, I think uh, Mikhail Kuklaev has a really interesting deadlift tech, deadlift deadlift technique that he does. Uh, he gets down and kind of dips his hips underneath and does it almost, I mean, like he's pulling a bar from a clean and that seems to really put him in a in an optimal position for a lot more leg drive, um, which tends to take the pressure off of your lower back. 
uh, puts a lot more work because you have to take the bar, you have to take your body farther through that. But it seems to work for him, and he's really good at deadlifting. So, oh man, these are long. Uh, what is your opinion on proper barbell row technique? The angle of bending over stance with grip. Does it depend on personal goals, engaging traffic, blah blah blah? Or is there a universal technique for guidelines to follow? In my video, in your videos, I've pretty much seen you doing it 45 degrees or higher. I think those are called Yates rows, and you're making progress on that. So I was wondering if you've modified it just that way to help you lock out, or is it strict form? Um, I will say that there is no. Whenever someone comes to me and says there's a universal perfection for technique, I will just stop listening right there because there is not on any lift. There is no perfect technique. It is dependent on so many different factors that are usually involved with the individual and you, if you want to fight about that in the comments go ahead I'm not even gonna bother um, there are ideals for each body type but perfect universal technique no and when it comes to uh, the angle of barbell rows I do them the way that I do them because if I bend over any farther I have to significantly reduce the weight and I don't feel like I'm engaging the muscles that I'm trying to engage to work on building my deadlift and my bench press and when I do bench press um, Here's something that I think about when I'm when I'm doing rows as as a bench press accessory. I'm not actually benching flat like this. I have an arch and it's coming down to this angle. And so if I'm pulling, it can be a little bit more of an extreme extreme upright angle for me because I'm engaging a lot of those same muscles in that plane of movement. And that's what's more important to me. Um, but honestly, I don't pay a lot of attention to the technique in my rows as being in pursuit of an ideal perfection because it's not a competitive movement for me and it's more of an activation um, of just the generalness of all those muscles up there and so that's more important to me over time than the nail and the exact muscular connection if you're if you're bodybuilding it's different I'm sure and and changing the angle would probably be beneficial but I like doing them the way I do them and um, I don't even have a different name for them I just do that. So I hope that answers that question. Number three, what is your opinion on training frequency and volume? Jason Blaha says that the optimal training style for natural athletes, whether it's bodybuilding or powerlifting or just general strength work, is full body three times a week, 20 sets per body part per week. And I agree with that because it makes the most sense. I just want to hear your pin on that one. As as a natural powerlifter, um, I, would, I think that I have found a pretty good rhythm for myself when it comes to I do train uh, I, I do four training sessions a week, I work my lower body on all those, and I bench on most of them. Um, so I guess I would agree. I don't think it's universal though. Again, it depends on the individual and your genetic, uh, your genetic predisposition to certain things. I have a friend um, who trained and got really successful at powerlifting by doing 531 and that was it and I know at the time that he was doing that that he was he was not enhanced and his numbers were crazy and I, he and I had completely different lifting styles he would go in and he'd work out for 45 minutes and do a couple of lifts and just had the genetic potential to blow everyone out of the water and I would be in there for two or three hours killing myself to see the, that progress and you know it worked for both of us, both both forms. So I don't think there is uh, an absolute answer for that. And again, I feel like anytime someone tries to tell you there's only one way to do something, they're trying to sell you something. And that's I'm that's not what Jason's doing, I'm sure. And uh, I like a lot of his videos, but I think that he's talking to the general public and saying this is this is an ideal that most people would fit into. But I think it really depends on the on the subject. And outliers exist in every aspect. Um, what do you do for core? Not for aesthetic reasons, but for maintaining intra-abdominal pressure without a belt. Uh, I squat without a belt, I deadlift without a belt, and I do pull-ups, and I used to do front squats, and I do a lot of pull-ups. And, I mean, your core gets activated by a lot of the things you do uh, without really paying a lot of attention to necessarily the crunch. I try to avoid anything where I'm collapsing my body, um, crunch-type movements or anything. Anytime that I'm doing direct core work, I like to maintain um, like a hanging a hanging leg raise or a V-up or something like that or something where I'm extending my body in a dip position and doing leg raises because I really you never want to train yourself to come forward and collapse like that there's never really a beneficial reason as far as strength strength gain to let your core collapse it's always about being strong and maintaining an upright position um, 
and so all my core training that doesn't involve actual like experiencing it through the lifts itself is based off of staying in extended strong position and so that is what I would advise for that that is my 10 minutes on that one and we will hit you guys up with number six on the way we're gonna keep going I'm gonna get all these questions answered I promise you that they will be up eventually so thanks again for watching look forward to the next episode peace